Hello and welcome to more Grixis Cube Draft. Uh, what do we got in this pack? Pented Prism. Dark Confidant, very powerful. Ooh, Mind's Desire. They got all these alternate arts, which looks cool, but it's really confusing when you're drafting. You're like, what even is this card? Uh, and then you realize it's Mind's Desire. Shrine of Burning Rage, if you want to go mono red. And Peat Bog's pretty good. Not a, not a huge fan of Drawn from Dreams, but it is pretty powerful. I kind of want to take Dark Confidant. Um, this card's either good in, like, black-red aggro, mono-black aggro, mono-black mid-range. Like, this card's really, really powerful. And it's also one of the only good, like, aggressive black cards in this pack. Like, these are pretty expensive. Erebos is probably pretty good in this format, too. Um, yeah, I think I want to try Dark Confident. I just love this card, and it seems like a keep for it. So, let's do it. Okay, in this pack, we got... Ooh, Wasteland. Wasteland is great. Although there are less... Actually, no, there's probably the same number of non-basics, so Wasteland's pretty good. Um, Priest of Forgotten Gods is excellent. All right, get out of here. Notification. Um, Dreadhorde Arcanist, very powerful card. I love that they brought in Crystal Vein. Pretty good card, too. I think I'm leaning towards Wasteland with my second pick maybe being Priest of Forgotten Gods. Also, True Name Nemesis, very powerful, and Chain Lightning's really good. Actually, maybe we take Dreadhorde Arcanist over Wasteland just because it's so good and like, if we go red-black like removal plus discard, yeah, you know what, let's take the Arcanist. I've convinced myself. Now we can take... So Burst Lightning is really good with Dreadhorde Arcanist. Collective Brutality is just a good card in general. Yeah, I'll take Burst Lightning. Just go for like a bunch of cheap interaction spells with Dreadhorde Arcanist and Dark Confidant. Like both of these cards are actually kind of similar. Like you play them for two mana. And if you get to untap with them, effectively they'll start drawing you a card every turn. Um, Bob draws you cards off the top of your deck, and Dreadhorde, Dreadhorde Arcanist draws you cards from your graveyard. Ooh, interesting. Okay. We actually have kind of a lot of options. I don't think I love Experimental Frenzy. Although, if we are going like super aggro, it could be a pretty good card. Um, I love Greater Gargadon in general, but pretty bad card with Dark Confidant in your deck. And then there's Fatal Push, Terminate, Moment of Craving. Devastating Summons is good in general, but I don't think it's good enough um, to be picking this early. If it wheels, I'll probably take it. Um, so Fatal Push kills a lot of stuff. Terminate kills almost anything, though. And if we are committing to Black Red, like this card is kind of nice. I'll take the Terminate. I kind of want to try Black Red. Ooh, Ash Salad. Interesting. So we have Temple of Malice. Hostage Taker is also a really nice card. I'm also kind of down for Freebooter, just stopping your opponent from doing anything. I mean, a lot of the decks in this format are like Storm, Planeswalker Control, Reanimator. From what I can tell, this is my second draft, but um, getting rid of non-creature spells seems pretty relevant, <laughs> given all these non-creatures. So I'm going to take the Freebooter, Passing Temple of Malice. In a deck with like, that's pretty aggressive, you kind of want untapped lands, but I would take Temple if there was nothing else in the pack. But what I'm saying is the Enter's Tapped. Um, kind of hurts you a lot more in a deck trying to cast aggressive two drops. See, now we got like Blackleaf Cliffs, which is kind of better. Um, fixes our mana, enters untapped. I kind of like that. I also do kind of like Strong Kirk Noble. Noble. If you can play it early, you can just kind of snowball and kill your opponent. And then there's Hazard. Kind of a non bow with Dark Confidant. I think I'm just going to take the mana fixing here. Let's just stay open, and we know we probably want to be red black. So. This can help us. And, like, there's only three colors in the cube, so, like, mana fixing is exponentially better. Ooh, Phyrexian Obliterator. I mean, this card is extremely powerful if we can cast it. And we could end up mono black aggro. So this card is very good against black. I mean, red, because, like, you can't kill it with burn spells, really. Um, it's okay against black and blue, but there's no white exile, which is usually the main way to get rid of this, so... I think this card's value goes up significantly in this cube. So that's an option. Um, I like it more than all of these. Knight's Whisper is a consideration, but I want to speculate on the Obliterator. I think it's so powerful that it's worth missing out on one Knight's Whisper for something that can just win the game against so many decks. Okay. I don't like Mangus of the Will. Theater of Horrors is interesting. So this is just card advantage if you're in like straight up black red aggro. Um, if they lost life, you can play cards off of it. Carrion Feeder is also interesting. I don't know how many synergies there are with this card. Like, you play it turn one, and, like, I don't really want to be sacrificing, like, Dark Confidant or anything like that. 
Um, so I think I want to try out Theater of Horrors. It is three mana, but I'm kind of down for that. Uh, Chandra's also good, but six mana is kind of a lot. Okay, there's Zergo and Shrine. So Mono Red seems pretty open, um, which means probably not going to be playing Phyrexian Obliterator, but the aggro deck is good. I actually don't know what I prefer, Zergo versus Shrine of Burning Rage. Because there is quite a bit of artifact hate in this cube, so like maybe just getting one drops is better. Especially with stuff like Theater of Horrors. But I think Shrine is probably worth it. It, it is colorless, so it can go in any deck. Wow. We kind of... <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why is this card wheeling? Um, hmm. I don't think I'm taking Young Pyromancer. I like Goblin Crater Maker, but not as much as I like these two cards. I think Wasteland is probably just better than Priest, so I'm going to take Wasteland. Especially if we get strip mine, like there's just a lot of options. Okay, so this is a two minute two two menace that gets back zombies. Uh oh, that's a zombie, interesting. I don't think I'm taking Dark Dwellers. Five mana is a lot. Go for the throat is okay, but we still could have outs to be like heavy black red if we get enough fixing. Now I'm gonna take go for the throat. Wow. Frenzy wield, devastating summons wield. So frenzy with go for the throat and terminate is pretty bad. Moment of craving has lifelink. Or like gains you some life, but I guess Frenzy is good out of the sideboard. I, I don't just don't like devastating summons too much. So Chandra creates elementals. Hmm. All right. Two two first strike haste. Wow. These both wield. Um. I think I'm gonna take the one drop. Hazard is super powerful, but we actually have a lot of like late game card advantage cards. Wow. Sulfuric vortex is pretty good. All right. So probably not playing Obliterator. And it looks like we're kind of moving in on mono red or like red splashing black just for Dark Confidant and maybe Terminate. Um, Vortex is the most powerful card in red. This card is super busted. And we're not really missing out on much. Maybe like a Winter Orb or I do like Apocrysite. This card's kind of cool too, but we'll take the Vortex. Strip Mind, okay. Strip Mind, wow, and Black Braids. And this might even wheel. Okay, now I'm on board. Strip Mind is... I think the single best card you can ask for in an aggro deck. So definitely down with that. Um, looking for if we do get black braids, we definitely want dark ritual then. Because playing this turn two just wins the game. You're, you, especially on the play, your opponent goes land go. You play braids, they sacrifice their only land. And then you can sacrifice like the creature you played turn one or another land and just keep making one drops. I'm going to take strip mine, hope to wheel, black braids. Ooh, drill bit, flame slash. So Heart of Kirin, not that great. Crew 3 is kind of a lot to pay. Um, it is good if you can like cast it from Planeswalkers, though, or activate it with Planeswalkers. Um, we technically could cast a Matter Reshaper, but maybe like Arc Trail or Brain Maggot is just better. So if we take Brain Maggot, the thing is I just like, I do want to be black for Dark Confidant, and Theater of Horrors I maybe like more than Frenzy, but probably not even. I think I might just take Arc Trail. This card, like, does a lot of work. Ooh, Crucible of Worlds Strip Mine? <sighs> See, <laughs> is that even worth it? Like, that's the only card that's good with this Strip Mine. Although it does win us the game. Like, we could just take Beaumont Courier, which is just a better card for our deck. Because playing Beaumont Courier turn one will win a lot of games. And, like, if we've already Strip Mined our opponent, we probably don't need Crucible. Oh, that's hard. It's my favorite combo. But I think it's, like, a bit win more. Because just the first strip mine plus like a one drop should be enough to win the game anyway. We're not like a big control deck, we're just trying to kill them quickly. So I think I am going to take the one drop and pass this sweet, sweet combo for better things. Ooh, Mox Opal, that's kind of sweet. Hey, they have Dream Halls, finally! <laughs> oh my gosh, I've wanted this card in cube for so long. So for those who don't know, this card lets you discard cards that share colors with the spell to cast them. Really, really good for cheating out big, expensive cards. I love this card. This should be in so many cubes. Although, <laughs> it leads to some really degenerate games, so maybe it shouldn't be in the cubes. Uh, Mox Opal would be really good. Maybe I guess we should have taken some artifact lands. I didn't realize that this card was in the cube. But probably just going to pick up this Sulphur Springs. Maybe we can wheel this Light Up the Stage or a Braid. Because I kind of want to cast Dark Confidant. And maybe that Matter Reshaper if it wheels. What is this card? 8 mana. Exhale the top 8. You can put a land card on the battlefield. I never knew this was a card. It's kind of sweet though. Probably putting that in EDH. 
I want to take Fire Confluence. Um, this card is just extremely powerful. And if cube where artifacts seem to be so important, I mean, Mox Opal is in the cube. Killing three artifacts is really good, but four mana to do six to their face is also really powerful. Okay. Ooh, Eldrazi Temple. I did not know that was in here. So, Zillaport Cutthroat is only when your creatures die. So, not super amazing. I kind of like Legion War Boss more than Goblin Chain Whirler. Um, this card, if cast early, just it's like a worse Goblin Ravel Master, but it's still quite powerful. And the Mentor is kind of nice if we have a bunch of like Beaumont Couriers and stuff like that. I like Angrath's Rampage. Chain Whirler is powerful, but there's no like elves really to kill with goblin chain whirler so it's only going to help us probably in the mirror match which i think is just worse than legion war boss hmm okay we got rick's money reveler or fort bolt probably the two cards we're looking at um reveler is really nice especially if you can cast this spectacle but fort bolt is just efficient and it can kill two things plus we kind of need more cards if we want to go off with dreadhorde arcanist so i'm gonna take the one mana bolt effect Ooh. okay what do we want here? Apocrysite. So this Doretti sacrifices artifacts to kill artifacts or creatures. Eh, it's okay. Um, this is a 2 mana 1-1. One, one. And then if it dies, it comes back with as a 4-4. Four, four, which is kind of good, especially if you have like good enough sacrifice outlets. Um, Carried Feeder we didn't take, but that's an option. I don't love Chainer's Edict. And Winter Orb is okay. But we're already playing Wasteland Strip Mine, so I'm just going to take Apocrysite. Um, Glorybringer was another consideration, but I don't really want to go up that high. We already have Stripmine Wasteland in our deck, now we can take Braids. I would love Falconrath Gorger. Maybe Braids isn't even good enough? But I've spoken so highly of this card, so... <laughs> I have to take it now, right? Release the Gremlins is a good sideboard card. Yeah, I'm not taking Finale, so... This card's not good in the main, but there are so many artifacts in this format that this can get some value. Even just being 3 mana, kill an artifact, make it 2-2. Two, two. Um, you've just described Manic Vandal. So it's Manic Vandal with upside, basically. Ooh, Gravecrawler, okay. Um, not taking Pithy Needle. It's so sad to see Cruel Ultimatum go so late. He really could have built this cube around Cruel Ultimatum, like Mirari, or... I don't know the guy's name. He's a legend from Legends. Uh, sure... Ooh, Pyromancer and Tanglewire. Um, I'm going to take the Pyromancer. Oh, actually, Tanglewire? I'm going to let it auto-pick. I have no idea which one to take. All right, we got Tanglewire. <laughs> like, two mana for two on do two damage is fine, but in some matchups, like especially against Storm and stuff, Tanglewire, Strip Mine, Braids is enough to win the game. I completely forget what I was saying before. Oh, yeah, it's like a black legend who has sacrifice to return a black card from your graveyard to hand. Um, and then Cruel Ultimatum returns a creature from your graveyard to hand, so you can keep alternatively casting those, and it's really powerful. Um, I don't love any of these. We could take Pillage if we just want to go on full land destruction, which I kind of... <laughs> I'm not against. We got Strip Mine, Wasteland, Braids, Tango Wire, Pillage. Seems kind of fun. Um, we probably will wheel Bedevil and like all these other cards, so obviously first picking Pillage. I thought that was Black Lotus and I got excited. It is not. Um, we can take... Hmm. There's actually not a lot for us in this pack. Lodestone Golem is good. It's a little expensive, but it does help us lock out our opponent from the game, so it's like a good 4-drop that stops them from doing stuff, and maybe we can wheel this Mutavolt. I'm on board. Woo! -woo. We got Eidolon and the Great Rebel. That card really helps lock your opponent out of the game. Like, we can have so many games we just win by going, like, play Eidolon, play Sylvuric Vortex. If they don't play spells, they take damage. If they do play spells, they take damage. I would love to wheel Simeon Spirit Guide. And I probably would play Gutter Bones, too, but Eidolon's way too good to pass up. Also, I've started, like, uh, looking at cards to cut and add. Right now, I don't think I can play Arcanist with only two one-mana spells. We need, like, five or six, probably, before we want to play this. Otherwise, it's just a 2-mana 1-3 Trample, which isn't great. If we're going the route of Braids, Epocrisite is probably nice. Um, we can play this turn 2 and then just sacrifice it to Braids. And then if we're going the route of Land Destruction, killing Artifacts kind of gets more appealing. I mean, most people are going to be playing Artifacts in this format, so we might as well just have an out to 
winning. Uh, we don't actually have a card to fetch up with this, but Rashad and Port is good. I love Rashad and Port, and I'll probably try and wheel this Blood Soaked Champion, but now our like land destruction mana denial plan is pretty strong. Probably can't play Ash Zealot now. Um, we actually want more fixing because our mana is getting kind of suspect, which makes me want to play Apocrysite even more. But this is kind of beautiful now. Stripmine, Wasteland, Rishid and Port, Sulfuric Vortex. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Ooh, Slavering Knolls? Um, Dream Stealer is a bit expensive for what I like. So this is a 2 minute 2 one. If you have a Swamp, they discard. Which is actually kind of powerful with all of our mana denial. Like, we can stop them from being able to play stuff and then hit in with this. The problem is it's really weak. So it'll probably wheel... Mages of the Wheel... It's fine, but I don't love it. Yeah, I don't think we're getting up to 6 mana to eternalize this. And 3 mana for a 1-2 menace isn't really what we wanted. Don't think I'm getting up to that much mana either. So I'm going to take Slavering Knolls over Never Return. Yeah, this card's not great, but we kind of need more 2 drops. Wow, okay. Um, Figure of Destiny versus Rakdos Cackler. So Figure is definitely the more powerful card, but it is harder to cast in the deck, whereas Rakdos Cackler... It's kind of just busted. It's a 1-mana 2-2, two, two, no questions asked. And we can almost play it with any card in our deck. Like Midnight Reaper, Una's Prowler, and Penal are all, are all good, but we need early plays, I think. Um, ooh, Reanimate's a nice card. I think I like Swift Spear. We don't have that many non-creature spells, but it is a 1-drop, which we need more of. And we might wheel Falcon Wrath Aristocrat. 4-mana uh, 4-1 four, four, Flying Haste is kind of nice. But we'll take Swiss Spear. It's weird seeing Reanimate go that late. Okay, Dread Wanderer I like. Uh, Cut to Ribbons. It's a good late game card. But I think the 1 minute 2 one is probably where we need to be. Just like, if you play a 1 drop and then untap, either cast a 2 drop or just start like Rashad and porting down their lands. All of those are pretty powerful plays. So we're definitely not going to be going with the Arcanist. Um, probably not release the Gremlins. So we can take Sire of Insanity. I mean, I'm not going to be casting Massacre Worm. Okay. Sire of Insanity, maybe we would play. Probably not, though. Okay, we can take Mizium Mortars or Rite of Flame. So Rite of Flame, probably just not good enough. And we could take, like, Innocent Blood or Exhume, but I think we do need a little bit more removal. Um, I think we wanted to wheel some cards from this pack, and none of them came around, which is kind of sad. Blood Soaked Champion, sure. Yeah, so the man in this deck is going to be challenging, that's for sure. Probably if our opponent has like a lot of creatures to kill, I'll take that. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to like mana screw our opponents and ourselves here. That's fine, that's fine, we got it. Um, I think I like Terminate. So we have 27 playables. Wow, these both came around. Um, I mean, Finger of Destiny is pretty good. Reanimate last pick? What is happening? Last pick reanimate, okay. I don't know what anyone else was doing. Probably everyone was fighting over Storm. No, because we got White Rite of Flame wheeled. I don't know what people were fighting over then. That's weird. I'm not going to question it. So, I don't know if I want a main deck Experimental Frenzy. It's only good against, like, grindy matchups. So, I think I start with that in the side. Theater of Horrors is kind of a little bit better because no matter what, it's going to draw us cards, whereas this, like, kind of empties our hand. But, I don't know. I'm going to think about these two. Because I'm only going to play one of them in the main. Same with Tanglewire, probably starting in the sideboard. And we have a lot of good one drops. Do I need Gravecrawler? If we control a zombie, that's a zombie. That's a human. That's a zombie. That's not a zombie, that's a devil. So, it's okay. It's a 2 minute 2 one. This is good. This card's actually quite good. So, our 1 mana plays are like very strong. 2 manas... Probably Slavering Knolls is only for the sideboard. I love Dark Confidant and Freebooter. Just the interaction is good. If we had seen like any Thoughtseize or Duress or anything like that, that would have made this deck a lot better. But I guess we got to play Freebooter in that spot. <laughs> Maybe we don't main deck Pillage. It's kind of cute, but we'll, we'll save that only against opponents with like a lot of mana fixing and expensive spells. And then I like both Braze and Lodestone Golem. I think I'm going to cut Frenzy just because Theater of Horrors is a lot cheaper. Um, we definitely want 17 lands. We're playing three colorless lands and our mana is kind of suspect. We could cut Black Braids. 
So Black Braids is particularly good when you can like turbo her out with like, in Vintage Cube in particular, she's so powerful because you can go like Ancient Tomb, Mox Mox Braids or like Land, Dark Ritual, on turn two, play Braids. When you're playing her on turn four, the effect is a lot weaker. Um, so I think I'm going to sideboard her and bring her in against um, like really slow decks. But our deck does look pretty powerful. I don't need any white sources. Um, as far as black sources go, we are mostly red. So we get up to five. I think six, six might be where we want to be. Because a lot of our black spells are early. No, maybe five, seven. Because we want to be able to play Eidolon and Sulfuric Vortex. We don't have any double black. So once we hit one black mana, we're good. I think I like the one main deck Terminate. Um, just kills anything. A lot more powerful than Go for the Throat. 17 land, three of them kill stuff. Yeah, I'm on board with that. See you guys around one. And we're going to bring in Reanimate if our opponent has a lot of like big creatures. Maybe. Probably not even. We're just going to kill them before anything happens. See you guys around one. Ooh, we won the die roll. 63M. All right, playing against them. Uh, So, hmm. This hand's definitely a keep. We need red mana. But once we hit it, we can kind of go off. And I think... I actually like getting down Beaumont Courier before Rakdos Calculator because the there's a distinct possibility we're going to want to discard our hand if we don't hit red sources fast enough. And this gains value every turn it attacks. Um, this just does more damage every turn it attacks. And against Wandering Fumeral, I like our chances. So if we hit a land, I might just Rishidin Port because then I can go like Rishidin Port this turn and then next turn like play Rakdos Cackler plus Rishid Import. If we hit Arc Trail, I think I'm going to play Kite Sail Freebooter. That tells us a lot about what's going on in their hand. We can like stop their two mana plays, and it lets us know which turns we want to use Rishid Import to stop them. So I'm going to play that, and then we can start porting them down. Hopefully I don't regret this. Definitely regret this, because they have two... They have a bunch of two mana plays. If we had just Rishid Imported, they would have not been able to do anything. So that's a little unfortunate. Um, Grim Monolith is kind of the most busted. Send me a message over here. <laughs> Alright, well you got lucky that I did not rush out and port you. Um, I think I take Grim Monolith. It stops them from going like Monolith into Thing Thing. Yeah. But now we know... Why did it reveal them twice? Oh my gosh. <laughs> So this is the original. No! Oh my gosh, why did it do that? Okay, I just delete the duplicates, right? Prismatic Lend is duplicate, Karn is duplicate, Cloud Skate's duplicate, and they played Island. And now they're playing Rakdos Signet. Man, so we really got messed up by not um Rashad importing them. Lodestone Golem. Okay, so they can play a four drop next turn if they hit a land. We're definitely attacking. And I think at this point. They would need to hit a land. I'm going to port them. Yeah, if we had just done that turn two, we could have just locked them out of the game, but that's fine. So what's our best draw now? Probably Wasteland, because their hand doesn't do much else. It's their hand. So now they have access to four mana. They didn't play a land. Karn and Course of Portal. So if they hit a land, then us Rashad and porting them is pretty bad, but I think I kind of like just going Rakdos Cackler plus port. Yes, I will unleash. Because they're at 16 and falling pretty quick. And again, their hand does nothing so far. We're also building up this Bowmat Courier. Tap you. And Strip Mine or Wasteland would be excellent draws. And just a land to play Lodestone Golem would be kind of good too. Baleful Strix. Okay, that's kind of a problem. Uh, no, we got Arc Trail. And they suspend Cloudscape. Wow, they drew a Signet. Okay. So we know three of the four cards in their hand. So... There is no stopping them from playing a spell next turn, but we can just get them low enough that we can draw cards or get Sulfuric Vortex down and just kill them. Um, I don't really like letting them block with Baleful Strix, so let's just go Arc Trail. This does two and this does one. And I have no need for black mana. I'm gonna put these over here, I guess. So they can, um, Riftwing Cloudskate or Beaumont Courier if they want to, but I think their better bet is to just play Karn and Downtick to make a 4-4 blocker, at which point we hopefully just rip a red source, play Sulfuric Vortex, and they lose. Okay, they're going with the bounce. 
I respect it. Yep. Red. Yeah, okay. Now I think they just... I guess I attack first. I can play... So what if when Cloud Skate's gone, they have Karn, Coercive Portal, and two unknowns. Um... I don't think it's worth swinging with those two just to get in for one damage, because they get their Grim Monolith back. Actually, it would be three. That put them to five. That actually seems kind of good. We play Beaumont Courier, we swing out. The Riftwing Cloudscape blocks here. They take three damage. Yeah. All out. Sorry, my AC is on. Yeah, so they get Grim Monolith back, and that's fine. No! No! Why did it do that? God, I clicked the wrong one. All right, well, you lucked out. That's very, very bad. <laughs> oh my gosh. So I got... <laughs> I got scared. That was really, really bad. We might just die. So our opponent should be at three and dead next turn. We'll see if we can still win. <laughs> uh, my AC kicked on and scared me, so I like looked over at it, and then I came back and just clicked Stromkirk Noble instead of Sulfuric Vortex. So we're going to put that over there. They might still die, hopefully do, but we just gave them Grim Monolith for no reason. And if they have Counterspell out this turn, that'd be very bad. I don't think their deck would play Counterspell. They're probably going to go um, Grim Monolith into Coercive Portal. Okay, Psalm. So I think they're still dead, but that was... That was some next level bad plays. I'm trying to think of what they could really do to get out of this. The thing that is good for us is Sulfuric Vortex stops life gain. So like, I think I just play Vortex and then Rish it and pour it. I'm gonna let them know. <laughs> let them know what's going on. Um, then we go Mountain, and I don't think there's any reason to attack. So we're just going to port them on upkeep. Tap that. It prevents them from like having an attacker and stuff. So both of those are gone, so we can close that. Yeah, that extra turn might kill us, but I think uh, sneaking in one damage with Legion Warboss might get us there. I definitely will be chumping the Construct, because they're going to make another one. Well, they should have done that pre-combat. Yeah, their only hope is to race, so we're definitely chumping. Can't be blocked by humans. That is not a human, okay. Because they have uh, two blockers, but not three. And this plays around something like, <clears throat> I don't know, Wildfire killing all of our creatures. But they would have played Wildfire pre-combat. God, I really, really hope I don't lose by not playing Sulfuric Vortex. Okay, that's good for us. Pilgrim's Eye. Okay, so they're just dead. Uh, no, they do have a blocker. Yeah, because they make another Karnstruct. Okay. Let's draw some burn. Any removal spell wins us the game. Any burn spell wins the game. Any haste creature wins the game. I guess it depends if they make a Karn token, but they... I don't know why they wouldn't. Alright, they get an island. Makes sense. And then... I'm assuming a Karn struct. If they don't do that, we win, because we... Whoa! You can have a smokestack. Alright, well, they just lose now. Why would you not make a creature to block with? That makes no sense. Well, now we win. Play you, make a 1-1, one, one. all right, good, good. They fall to 1, and then we just uh, Rishan and port them, well, they just die. Okay, didn't matter, but that was really close. <laughs> so, opponent had a lot of artifacts. Release the gremlin seems pretty good against a lot of artifacts. Um, terminate is okay, it's just okay. Legion War Boss, Dark Confidant. I mean, I think most of our deck's pretty good. Lodestone Golem's pretty bad. Yeah, they have all artifacts. Okay, so we're going to replace Golem with Release and run it back. Yeah, I don't think we can mulligan these. It's got a Disruption, Pressure, Late Game Inevitability with uh, Fiery Confluence killing three artifacts. The problem is, um, they're key pl Oh, yeah, let's do that. Get out of here. I was going to say, they're key plays on turn two. So we don't really get to Rashad and port them, but with Strip Mine, it's possible they only had two lands in hand. I'm gonna go with Blood Soaked Champion, I think. No, Rectos Cackler can attack through a lot of their 1-1s one better. Um, no, we're gonna go Champion. Go. So yeah, turn one Strip Mine just makes it so maybe they get stuck on two, because they have so many like Signets and stuff. Yeah. 
that now our mana denial is worse. Ooh, Freebooter is good. So let's do that. Freebooter just takes their pressure away. Oh, their hand is. Their deck is sweet. Okay, so Coercive Portal versus the Antiquities War. So this, look at the top five cards. You can get an artifact card. I think that's probably scarier than Coercive Portal. Coercive Portal just draws a card. Yeah, I'm going to take that. Leave them with Portal, Platomir. Okay. Them being on the play is a huge game here, because we could have started Rashad importing them. Why does it reveal it twice? <laughs> Why? Okay, this is gone, and the Antiquities War is gone. So that's the reveal. So they play Solemn. They get a land. So they played Mountain as well. And we just need to hit a red source. Okay. Ooh. Um... Okay, so if they just tap out for a course of portal, I mean, this is going to be good. Both of these are going to be good late games. So now we need to decide, do we want to go Shrine of Burning Rage into Rakdos Cackler? Or just play a Legion War Boss? And do we want to attack with Blood Soaked Champion? I think building up Shrine is better for us. So let's do that. Shrine, definitely tapped wrong, because I could have... Uh, we're not playing so good. I will say this is pretty early in the morning. But I am definitely not playing well here because I could have taken one less damage by tapping the other way. Oh, this is gone. So we know two of the three cards in their hand. Course of Portal makes sense. And let's just draw a red source, please. Oh, oh man. <laughs> Fire Confluence, let's just kill three artifacts here. Game? <laughs> And then I'm gonna untap, and then I'm gonna play Release the Gremlins. Oh man, that's glorious. So Portal's down, they have Palladium Mirror and two Unknowns in hand. I mean, that is the risk you run when playing this deck. Whirler Rogue. Well, that's a pretty good draw. Mountain, okay. So we're set up for Release the Gremlins next turn. Uh, hmm. Do I want to get greedy? Because I can just Release the Gremlins, these two Thopters. And then I'm have two tutus in play, and then I can just swing out, or I can get Legion War Boss down, and I can tap down like their mountain or swamp, and then release the Gremlins next turn. Nah, this has got to be good here. No, we're not gonna. We're gonna pay wisely here. So kill both of those, get two tutus, and then I think I just swing out. Yeah. So if you're drafting this cube, make sure you get your sideboard artifact removal. And our opponent's kind of just dead next turn to the shrine if they can't kill it. Um, wildfire would be pretty rough. Riftwing bounce, bouncing shrine, okay. That's a good start, but this is a lot of pressure. Now we can go... So, let's see, this blocks one of these. They take one, two, three, four, five, six. I think I like Rishon importing, so I'm just going to go with um, Legion War Boss plus Rishon import. Attack, attack, attack. Um, if they block here, they take one, two, three, four, five. Okay, we win the match. <laughs> Good games, opponent. See you guys next round. Neato! Core. Let's go first. Oh, buddy, is this a hand? Is this a hand? This is a hand. Um, so we're going to go... They're on seven as well. Okay. I would normally say play around Wasteland, but... We would actually kind of prefer our opponent to wasteland this Blackleaf Cliffs because it puts them down in tempo and our hand's pretty aggressive. Ooh, Serum Visions, okay. So, in that case, when you kind of, like, if you would trade your Blackleaf Cliffs for an opponent's land, then there's really no point in playing around Wasteland. How did they scry? Two cards on bottom, that's good for us. Swamp. So... We're playing Mountain into Dark Confidant. I think us drawing cards is pretty powerful. Although we could play Kite Sail Freebooter to clear the way. But I, I like drawing cards. Who doesn't, right? For two. So if they have a kill spell here, I'm going to feel kind of bad. But if they're just cycling of Fetid Pools, I think we're in business. Let's see what we hit. Strip Mine. Strip Mine! Rectos Cackler. I'm not complaining. So we're going to lead on the Freebooter. Oh my gosh, their hand is very slow. Okay. So, definitely not taking Bedevil. They're going to play Mana War next turn. I guess we take Batter Skull. Yeah, they're going to have... Kali Toss is kind of a problem. Do they have black mana for it? 
Yo, this is very frustrating over here. So this is the hand we took stuff from. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, I think that's their hand. So they do have an extra swamp for Kalidus, which is going to be a problem, but we're drawing cards, so... Let's do that, play Rakdos Cackler. And then they can bounce Dark Confidant, so we're not drawing cards there. Um, we just need to find a way to get rid of Kalidus. So Mana War, Swamp. Bouncing Dark Confidant. Yep. Ooh, Wasteland doesn't do anything. Um, so we can just swing out. Um, if they block Blood Soaked, we can get it back, so we kind of prefer that. And we want to get all our trading done before Kalitas comes down. So they take three. And we play Dark Confidant. And Swamp. I don't want them to know about Wasteland. So they're at 11. Island Kalitas. No, they hit the mountain! Oh, uh, they could Bedevil now. But I think their best bet is to play Kalidas this turn. Interesting. No, you, you definitely play Kalidas this turn and then Bedevil next turn. Yeah. This gives us outs to draw removal, though. Yeah, that's pretty bad for them. <laughs> oh, man. Terminate into Eidolon. Probably just game. So they have Island Bedevil, so they can, like... Bedevil the Freebooter to this turn, and then try and hit Batter Skull the following turn? No, that's too slow. Nice. Okay. Um, so they're like super dirtily. I almost feel like Slavering Knolls would be worth bringing in. Also, Go for the Throat is probably better than Forked Bolt against them, considering we saw Kalitas. Maybe Never Return is better than Go for the Throat? Oh, this is definitely a Pillage matchup. This is probably a Tangle Iron matchup too, but Pillage is kind of better. Just kill your land, any land. Yeah, I like Pillage, Slavering Knolls, and we can get rid of Arc Trail and probably Burst Lightning. They seem to be like really slow. Pillage can also kill Batter Skull. Um, do I want anything else? Basically, do I want Never Return? I think just locking them off mana seems better. Their mana seems absolutely terrible. So we're gonna we're gonna try this. Yeah, this seems good. I'm excited to see how Slavering Knolls goes against them. I might just get, like, destroyed by Pyroclasm. Ooh, Mox Diamond. Nice. It is definitely card disadvantage, but opponent wisely playing around Wasteland. See? So we're gonna go Bloodsoak Champion. I like this more than Rakdos Cackler, because if they do kill it, we can get it back. Okay, now I don't understand their play. They just discarded a Scryland. That's weird. So we attack. Opponent, no! <laughs> Don't let you... Oh my gosh. Don't let your opponent attack with Blood Soak Champion before you uh, play it. Because now we can just get it back. I could also play Slavering Knolls. Oh, this is kind of hard. So Slavering Knolls is like pretty sweet if we... Alright, we'll do this. But yeah, they let me attack. So if I had no plays there, I could just get it back to hand. But now I think my sequence is going to be Slavering Knolls into Sulfuric Vortex. And if they don't have Kalidus here, then they're going to be in trouble. I mean, that's pretty good. But we can stop the lifelink at least. Yeah, this card is not great in general. But I figured against their like super slow, dirtily deck, it'd be pretty good. Alright, let's stop the lifelink. Hopefully they don't have like Mana Leak. And then we pass turn. And then we go next turn Shrine into Rakdos Cackler. And... Then our clock is bigger than theirs. We take two. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> I think I got a pillage, right? That seems pretty good. Pillage, kill your Mox Diamond. Because their deck is like very mana hungry. This stops them from casting like all their big plays. Um, let's unleash a Cackler. Yes. Go ahead. And we lost out on two damage by not playing Shrine there, but like... I think stopping our opponent from having 5 mana is definitely worth worth it. Because they didn't have a play on 5 last turn. Okay. That's fine. Now they're down to 1 card in hand and they're locked under Sulfuric Vortex. Seems good to me. Go. So if we ever get to attack, we get to bring back Blood Soak Champion too. Yeah, this does not bode well for the old opponent here. Take 2. Okay. Keep playing Mountain, so if they play any creatures, even Batter Skull we can kill, and they die... No, at the moment we die first, but... 
Okay. That is something. Wow, are we actually going to lose this? I mean, we can kill the Grave Titan, but we have just drawn so many lands. Uh, this is kind of rough. Yeah, we can kill Grave Titan by Mizzy Mortars plus Shrine. But then we still have to deal with the two zombies. But I think that's our best bet. Our top decks are better than theirs. Um, hang on. How does the clock work? So they're at 12. They fall to 10. And then they hit me. Let's say I kill the zombies. They hit me for 6. So I die in 2 turns. So let's say I overload Mizium Mortars here. They're going to take 2 off Shrine, go to 10. They're going to take 2, go to 8. And this is going to go to 4. So what's is that more likely? Do they enter tapped? No. If I kill Grave Titan, then the two zombies hit me. I fall to 10. And then, yeah, I cut all of my burn. So I think I just have to kill this. This is super bad, though. What the heck? What is... Hang on. <laughs> all right, that was weird. Magic Online doing some crazy stuff right now. Yeah, I think we might actually lose. Sometimes you just die to a Grave Titan. So... We have quite a few good draws though. I think it was better to kill the Grave Titan because this gives us an extra turn. Um, we were dying in two turns as opposed to three, or three turns as opposed to two. And if we just draw like a two-two, that can block the zombie, that's pretty good. <laughs> of course, I guess we can do this. We can swing with the Swift Spear, get back Blood Soak Champion. Oh, now we're just dead. <laughs> I guess we die in two turns either way. Yeah, I didn't do the math. All right, we're just dead. Yeah, yeah, we weren't winning by blocking though, so that was just pretty unfortunate luck. I think I keep the deck the same, although Experimental Frenzy is kind of tempting. Over Theater of Horrors? Yeah, I, I kind of like Frenzy more because we're going to empty our hand pretty quick. Oh, and we get to be on the play? Yeah, I'm okay with this. Rishid and Port, Gravecrawler, Pillage. Seems good to me. <laughs> oh man, this is, if I could play every game of Magic, with this opening hand. How many games do you guys think I would win? <laughs> Probably a lot. Probably a lot. Ooh. Ooh. And it's a non-basic too, so we can wasteland it if we draw it. And they bottom with the scry. Yeah, that's pretty good. So we're gonna stop on their upkeep, obviously. Ooh, and we got removal. Nice. Um yeah, I think I'm gonna port. We can't actually pillage turn three. But if we draw one drop, then we can play it and Rishin and Port, and that seems pretty good. All right, we can attack. Did that take off our clock? What is going on? No, it's taking off the opponents. I don't know what's happening. Magic Online's doing some, like, lag, but not. A lot of spells, I think I've edited it out so you won't see it, but a lot of spells, I, like, click it and target, and then it just sits there. And it's like, choose a target. And I'm like, why? Well, I picked one. So they don't get any mana. Ended pools. Um, do I want to cut them off of red or blue? That's pretty good. So let's play. Let's attack. And we play Blood Soak Champion, Rishin and Port. I think I like cutting cutting them off of blue. Stops them from doing stuff like Serum Visions to get out of this. And we get to see um, what land they play, so we know what to pillage. Swamp Knight's Whisper. Okay. I think I want to kill the Fetid Pools. And they have to discard? That seems good to me. Swamp. So, they had quite a few red cards like Bedevil. Maybe I kill the red. It stops them from having, like, interaction too. Yeah, let's do that. Kill that. And then, that's dead. Then we start porting them down and they just very quickly die. Because their best play last turn was Night's Whisper. Granted, they've drawn two cards since then. Talisman, okay. Ooh, okay. <laughs> so let's play Strip Mine. Strip Mine, their only red source. That's probably Scoop City. Yeah! <laughs> That's beautiful. That's beautiful. We'll see you guys next round. Oh, yeah, we keep these. We keep these. Playing against Holica in the finals. We're going to 3 0 with my favorite archetype. <laughs> We got all my favorite cards, plus it's not Vintage Cube, so like, we just get to- Ooh, and they mulliganed? Oh, this is perfect. I'm so happy. And they're playing blue. Yeah, let's do it. Turn one, Stromkirk. I think I like Rashadinport over Apocrisite, but it depends on what they play. If they have any plays here, I'm gonna play Apocrisite. If they don't have a play, then Rashadinport is way better because 
If they don't play anything on turn two, then turn three we Rishid and Port down their lands, and then they only have two mana again. They didn't play anything last turn, so they're not going to be able to play anything this turn unless they draw it. Well, it's mono blue so far. So yeah, if they play like a Signet here, I'd probably just land a Parkersite, trying to increase our clock, but we'll see. Grim Monolith. That's scary. That's like pretty scary. Um... I'm going to Rishid in port. I don't think the one damage is worth it. I don't know what this is doing, but I would like to be able to kill whatever they play off of it. Tap this. This also cuts them off like double colored mana. And then we're just going to try and shut them off this turn and then Legion War Boss um, next turn so that we can fire Confluence away all these artifacts that they're putting into play. Wow. Rift Wing Cloud Skate. Okay. Well, they're going to have a rough go of it next turn. So they have one, two, three, four, five mana. Well, if they play a land, I could rush it in port, but I think putting the Legion War Boss in play is like definitely worth it. Like a one, one attack. Yeah, and then this grows, and then we fire confluence, kill everything, and they have to deal with the board as well. Seems good to me. Okay, so port would not have mattered. Hers is a good card though. But not today. Let's do that. All right, Confluence, kill three artifacts. Um, wait. Is he a human? He's a human! <laughs> yeah, let's do that. Kill three artifacts. Um, this one, this one. So I'm kind of scared of Grim Monolith, but it takes three to untap, four to untap. Yeah, I'd rather cut them off of this, I think. This is actually kind of tough, because they could just wait and then untap Grim Monolith. I'll take this. It cuts them off of burst mana. It also makes our wrist shot import better. And uh, this is why you take this card very highly in this format. It Every time I've cast it has been a, basically an ancestral recall. Make a goblin. So they can kill one of the goblins, but that's fine. Oh, I could do this. Then they can't even kill a goblin. Yeah. Next turn I can land Theater of Horrors plus a Parker Sight or plus... um. Rishad in port? I probably like the port. Of course they had the fight. No. Oh, I see. What did they hit? Island? Ha! Yeah, yeah! <laughs> Alright, so release the gremlin seems like it should probably just be in every game. Um, pillage killing artifacts is actually pretty relevant, and the fail case of killing land seems good. Lodestone Golem maybe is just not good in this format because everyone is running like a million artifacts. And I think I just run it like that. Release the Gremlins, pretty good card. Okay, so if we draw a red source, this hand is pretty good. Yeah, and we're on the draw. I'm gonna keep. Turn one, blood soaked. Yeah, we can remove the upkeep. Like we just have a lot of good turn one plays. And then Theater of Horrors plus pressure is like pretty good. Chromebox. Everyone playing the card disadvantage game. They exiled repeal. Playing a thing, okay. Well, they're down to three cards in hand. And we just need to hit a red source. Although if this is Urza or like a... We're in Power Stone, okay. I mean, that's a lot of mana. Dude, <laughs> we need red. <laughs> Please. Play you, pass turn. I mean, this, this is how we lose, right? We drew our artifact hate, but can't play a single spell in our hand. Meanwhile, our opponent has like seven mana. So... Oh, wow. Wait, in the Master Waves? That's their whole hand? Oh, we can totally beat this. Red. Okay, maybe not. Um, I can swing with both. So neither of my dudes can block. If I swing with both, they block here and here. And then they just have Master of Waves. I'll pass. They have no cards in hand, and we're just drawing to a single red source. And uh, so we can play around Spell Skype protecting the Elemental. Wow, no attacks. Okay, red. Okay, Rectus Cackler is good. And do I unleash? I think the answer is actually no. Because I would... I want one creature that can block. Yeah, their top decks are better than ours, that's for sure. Um, I kind of want to... Well, Wasteland is good against Seed of the Synod, but that might be the only one. Mm -hmm. If we draw red, I think I have to jam Theater of Horrors that can start getting us um, lands off the top. There we go. Yeah. Because I need to draw into Fiery Confluence mana. They could have a counterspell, but maybe not. No attacks. 
Then we can uh, Mizium Mortars the Spell Sky next turn. Harbinger, okay. Five mana, six mana, Frost Titan. That's bad. Tap down a mountain. Those are some good draws. So we block the elemental, we take two. We draw land. No! No! <laughs> oh man. Um, I'm not giving up. We're gonna play the Dread Wanderer. Go. If Frost Titan attacks and taps down Mountain, we can set up to Chump Block with Dread Wanderer next turn. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we fall to eight. Yeah. No blocks. Man, opponent's drawing just straight gas off the top. I mean, like, we did keep a little greedy hand. We needed red source. Ooh. That's... Well, returning that doesn't do too much. Because we're not going to hit them anyway. Forked Bolt. Yeah, all right. All right. We'll move on. Um, Slavering Knolls. Goblin Bombardment. Go for the throw. Definitely not bringing that in. No, I think we just keep it. Actually, I am going to get rid of Wasteland for a Mountain, because I have a lot of double red artifact hate, and they only showed the one artifact land that we could kill. Um, I think we're better off making our mana more consistent. All right, round three, game three for all the money. Let's go first. Let's keep this hand. Definitely keep this hand. Stromquirk into Kite Cell Freebooter into Legion War Boss is a pretty strong start. If this card hits like twice, it's just gonna snowball out of control. And if our opponent's mulliganing, which it seems like they are because they're taking time. Show game log. Mulligan to six, they might even go to five. Okay, they went with six. <clears throat> play you. Go ahead. I like the no plays. That makes our uh, freebooter much, much better. And they can't repeal either. I'm gonna freebooter pre-combat. Okay, future sight. Hmm, so if we attack with Stromkirk, they can bounce the Stromkirk Noble with Harbinger of the Ties, right? When it enters the battlefield, you may return target tapped creature to their owner's hand. So I think we take Thirst, because Future Sight is pretty slow. Yeah, I'll take Thirst, that slows him down. And then I actually think we don't attack, that's why we played it pre- oh my gosh. <laughs> close, 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 close. So that's five cards, okay. And yeah, no attacks, pass turn. So we go Island, Harbinger is a blocker. They drew Riftwing Cloudskate? Fine. Um, I'm okay now with them bouncing something. I think I want to get Legion Warboss in play. This makes 1-1s. One and they can like bounce the 1-1 one one and kill it, so we might as well swing out. Riftwing Cloudskate was an excellent draw for them, by the way. Because they had nothing else to do on turn 2. So now they go Scavenger Grounds, Harbinger, Bouncing, Stromkirk. But we have enough mana where that doesn't really matter. Harbinger's gone. Next turn they might have Master of Waves if they hit lands. But they're not going to hit lands because we have Pillage. Pillage actually hurts them pretty badly. So what do I do here? I can play Theater of Horrors into Stromkirk Noble and hope to dodge a Master of Waves. I kind of want to get them off of blue mana, so I think I do offer the Legion War Boss trade. Yeah, I think I attack first, because cutting them off blue mana seems pretty good. We attack like this, and we pump up the Goblin. Although, if they block this Goblin, they take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, they fall to 12. Now we're not going to give them free reign. Put it here. And based on how they block, if they don't block, I think we pillage an island. But if they do block, then Master of Waves isn't so bad. So now we can... Oh, it's so hard. Because they would need to naturally draw a land out of one of these two. It's so much better if we get Theater of Horrors online and Stromkirk. That, I think I do that. Because this just draws us a card every turn. No land. What did they do? Suspended Sestra. Okay, well we're definitely pillaging now. <laughs> Strip mine, island, pillage, get out of here. <laughs> what do we exile off the theater? Yeah. <laughs> oh man. If I could play land destruction every game, I would be so happy. Oh, that was just brilliant right there. <laughs> oh man. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this.
almost as much as I did. I don't think you enjoyed it as much as I did. Because that was great, man. These two cards, ooh, so good. See you guys next time.